welcome to Cornish Walkie Trails. Today we're in Foy. In today's video, so, looking good. Cheers. Out of ten. Ten. We're staying for twenty-four hours. It's ten pounds. Do you fancy going in the aquarium? What's best, Foy or Mevagissi? And here's our four million pound house. I think everything looks cute in Foy. Sums up Foy in one clip. So we're in Foy today. What we wanted to do was to give you kind of a local's insight, a guide to visiting Foy, making the most of your day, answering that question, is it worth visiting Foy? As we go through, we'll tell you how much we're paying for things, and then you'll get an idea of the budget that you'll need when you visit. Foy is on the south coast of Cornwall, near St Austell. Welcome to Foy, pronounced Foy to rhyme with joy. The town is at the mouth of the river Foy and has a long association with fishing and smuggling, and more recently, yachting and tourism. It's a wealthy town with some of the most beautiful waterfront properties in Cornwall. But will our day today be filled with joy? So the first thing you need to do is park your car. So let's take a look at the parking in Foy. There are three car parks in Foy, all of which are owned by the County Council. For visiting the beach, we suggest you use Ready Money Cove Car Park. This is the one closer to the beach, Ready Money. We're June 2023. You're looking at £6.50 to, for three to four hours or £10 all day. The cheapest but smallest car park is Caffer Mill. I can see one space. Yes, yeah, so this car park is smaller than the main car park. So current charges at the moment, a little bit cheaper. Looking at £4.80 for three to four hours. For our visit, we parked here at Main Car Park. So this is the biggest car park in Foy. It's called the Main Car Park. Um, it's June 2023. But uh, if you're visiting, you're doing a half day, three to four hours, you're looking at £6.50. If you're staying for 24 hours, it's £10. This notice board is really useful if you've never been to Foy before. So main car park is up the hill and the main part of the town is here along 4th Street. So you take this little route, it's quite steep. Everybody mentions about the steepness of it, but Cornwall seems to have a lot of hills, a lot more than up country. If you don't fancy the hill, there is the Foy bus service and this will drop you outside the church. Foy Town Bus stops here every 15 minutes to take you into town. Now you're looking at a pound for an adult for a single journey and 50p for children. Under fives are free. But we're going to walk. Okay. We're going to take you down to the church town quay. We're going to maybe go in the museum. There's also an aquarium down there. We'll take you along 4th Street, give you a guide to what shops are there. It's really nice 4th Street. And we might go up to Caffer Mill. There's a good ice cream shop up there, which we will leave till later. Then we will come back, explore the Esplanade and show you where the ferry is to go to Pole Ruin. We'll also continue to Ready Money Cove. There's a lovely ice cream shop out there. We might have an ice cream before we venture out to St Catherine's Castle. Sounds great. All I heard was two references to ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> a must have Foy tourist guide. Brilliant. So Foy has been welcoming visitors and tourists for years, hasn't it? It has, yes. Hundred, well, over a hundred years, I would yeah, say. Yeah, we've got an old guidebook with us today, which we'll pull out a bit later. But that being said, everybody seems to have a good time. If you look at TripAdvisor, there's lots of five-star reviews going through. So there doesn't seem to be much to complain about. The car parking is always an issue, which we hope we've already covered and given you a lot of detail for to help you successfully park. And the walk down, yes, it's steep, but there's not a lot you can do to change that. You could take the bus though. You so, can, yes, yeah. And um, th you're right, that's really the only negativity I could find when we looked on TripAdvisor. Yeah. People were complaining a bit about the car park, especially in the height of summer, they were struggling to find somewhere to park. But there are lots of car parks in Foy, and a lot of them are council run car parks. We've never had a problem parking here, have no, we? No, no, we've always been successful parking here, never had any penalties or fines. I wonder if I'll get more complaints this year with the parking fees going up, that yeah. might be an issue. And other people did comment on the fact that Foy, because of the nature of Foy, it's built onto a quite a steep hill, but if you are walking, it is quite steep. They were also saying that when you're actually down in the town centre there, if cars or vans are coming through, there isn't really much room to get out of the way, yeah. is there? 
we found recently when we looked for some information of when we left Cornwall and visited near London, we were struggling to find local businesses and if you don't know the name you can't find it on Facebook. We might not say every name but we'll occasionally film them as we go through the high street yeah. like restaurants, cafes, that sort of thing. So at least you'll know then what the names of the business are and you can have half a chance of finding them on social media. One of the most vibrant parts of Foy is Tang Ki. This is Tang Ki. You've got several places to eat here. The most famous, I guess, is the King of Prussia. In all the social media posts that you see online, big pink pub, you can't miss it. An eight ounce King's burger with all the trimmings would be 18 pounds. I'm sure it's very nice, but call me tight. That seems quite expensive for burger and chips. What do you think? And if you're anything like me, you struggle with Facebook or struggle to find places to eat when you go somewhere new. So here are some of the places we filmed from the outside. We filmed their menus to give you an idea of what there is available in Foy. Obviously, we haven't tried anything or everything that we filmed. Just behind the ship in is Kitto's of Foy. They sell Malcolm Barnicot pasties in yeah, there. Yeah, signs behind you. Yeah. They're very nice. I've had them from here before and they're very nice. Out of ten? Ten. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Apparently Gordon Ramsay swears by Niles. He swears at lots of things. So it's also a fish and chip shop. Large cod, £8.50. And chips, £2.70. And lastly, here's some idea of the activities that you could do in Foy. We just meander through the streets and take you with us. Foy has a small and quirky museum with a variety of exhibits ranging from Daphne du Maurier and Q to the history of the Bidinic Ferry. It's only a pound per adult, which we thought was a bargain. Well, for me, there was lots of interesting old photos in the museum. I've never been in the aquarium. We'll find out how much it is in a minute and see if it's worth it. It seems to have mixed reviews online, but generally people agree that the touch pool was excellent for children and a good activity, especially on a rainy day, and dogs are welcome. OK, so the aquarium advertises locally caught specimens, lobsters and crabs, shellfish, members of the shark family, strange, fascinating creatures of the deep. Do you fancy going in the aquarium? No. No, I don't either. We've never done it, have we? I think fish should be in the sea. Yeah. Or and a plate. It's, it's also, it's five pounds an adult, oh, right, four okay. pounds for a child. Um, well, people do say I've, I look particularly young. <laughs> don't think you'll get away with that. Okay. wander down Fly Street now. There's bakeries, cafes, gift shops, card shops. It's quite a good, well, well patronised High Street, isn't it? Quite like as well. It's every one of the buildings here it's looks individual. different, isn't it? Yeah. They're all unique. Got to stop here because when we were in the museum, there was four photos of this view. Of the lugger. Yeah, from 1890, wasn't it, through to early 1900s, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's not gonna, changed, is it? No, I'm going to film it now. <laughs> totally recognisable, not changed. I particularly like the last photo with the coach outside. Quite a few independent retailers. There's a bookshop behind me. Um, beyond that is Web Street Company. There's a gallery here. So it's quite a selection, a variety of little shops. It's really quaint and lovely to walk around. Something that we've definitely noticed in the last few years is that shops are leaving Truro. The footfall in Truro has diminished since Covid. But places like this will have brand names like Cecil Mountain Warehouse and they're moving to the seaside towns because they're busier. So we've got to look in the estate agent's window, see how much it is to live in Foy. So what's that one? Exceptional water fronting property, two million. Beautiful traditional cottage, 1.3 million for bed. As 
we've been walking around, I don't know about you, I've noticed quite a few signs up for cruises on the river and hiring boats, private hire, um, a rib boat taking you out and around, private hire that as well, can't you? I, th I think Foy is all about the harbour, isn't it? Yeah, it's really? all about the water, isn't yeah. it? I mean, we, we, we've been on, on the water before, haven't we? Yeah. And we've done the ferry across from uh, Poruan, and it is a lovely way of actually viewing the Foy, isn't it? It's always cooler on the water, isn't it? It's so refreshing. There's a lovely little dinghy out there at the moment with a bright orange sail, really catches your eye against the blue. It's gorgeous. That's one ear, I'll have this one. Give this one a go. Looks right, isn't it? Take that one out for a bit, I'm sure it'll be right. Look at me sailing along here. It's pretty, isn't it? Sarah'd like this. I wonder where she's gone. Oh, it's Daphne de Maurier's house down there, look. She'd like this. Just been out for half an hour, having a pop around. Once we have gone. Yeah, a lovely time. Okay. Yeah, went out and did some crabbing. Yeah. Yeah, I had an ice cream. I don't believe you. I had a cream tea. I don't believe you. I had a pasty. You. I don't... And I'd come back again. I don't believe you. I like Foy. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much sums up Foy in one clip. Have you noticed a lot of these properties now? Holiday homes, giveaway clue it is the key, the key box, box, isn't it? Well. Yeah. See what I like doing? Just going up to the key box. No. Just put a random code in. No, just you see don't. If you can get the key out. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Sarah, let me show you one of my favourite little alleys. Let's stand this one. Come with me. view is beautiful isn't it? No, I think more intrepid than down further. Good I don't fancy that personally see. I'll give it a go. Footprints. Yeah from above it doesn't show how high those steps are. Oh, actually you're making it look easy. You're like a mountain goat. It. I'll look at the view when you filmed it. Smallest beach in Foy. Private beach is all mine. <laughs> Standing room only. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. He's six paces long. Too wide. <laughs> six by two. All I need. <laughs> Gosh, look at that coming up now. Beautiful boat. Wow. So we haven't made it up to the main road yet, but I just love these two doors. They're so old, aren't they? Two separate properties. Yeah. One onto the road and one onto the waterfront. There's a stone around that door, though. Yeah. That is old, isn't it? It's been here for hundreds of years. What's behind the door? <laughs> Who lives in a house like this? <laughs> So this is the property that we pointed out in the estate agent's window. So it's going for 1.3 million and it's a four bedroomed property. Property prices in Cornwall, well, gotta laugh really, haven't you? <laughs> and who has been to Foy before will know that that ferry side over there was where Daphne de Maurier lived at one point. This is the Bidinic to Foy car ferry and it provides easy access between Mid and East Cornwall. It's ideal for day trips between Loo or Polpera in East Cornwall and Foy and further down to West Cornwall. For walkers it provides access in particular to the Hall Walk starting or ending in Bidinic. Mind that nice car sir. Oh yes. 
I know. It's is brilliant, it isn't is it because it? it's just like a big Meccano set and you want yeah. to drive it? It's colourful as well, isn't it? Yeah. Is it like a little boy you wanted to be a train driver? Yeah. 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 What's great though is we've just been in the museum. Yes. You see that great big painting on the wall of the original Badillac yeah. Ferry and it's just yeah. two guys on the ferry, isn't it? And also that reminds me, did you see the photographs of the car falling oh, off the ferry? It did in the 1950s. Yes. That's crane it out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit bigger now. Yeah, I don't think it'll fall off now. <laughs> so over the river on the Badillac side, I think that's the O'Maze house that was up recently at the beginning of the year. Oh, really? I think it's that one. This house, plus a quarter of a million pounds, could be yours if you enter by Easter Monday at omaze.co.uk. Gosh. Mm, so that's gosh. the Omaze house, you reckon, then? I think so. So can you talk like the woman that uh, did the adverts? She does talk in a very particular way. She kind of emphasises all the wrong bits. We're on the River Foy, and here's our four million pound house to enter the draw. <laughs> <laughs> Over there. I wonder if it's been uh, won then. That's what I was wondering. Who, who's won it and what are they going to do with it? It looks all shut up. Um, that's quite apt. You, you are the fourth monkey. I always knew there was something wrong with me. Uh, so we set off with a plan of making quite a grown up guide to uh, to It's just, just De degenerated into being a, a mooch around <laughs> boy and talking gibberish. Okay, so we've walked. Oh, he's gone. Where's he gone? He does this to me. He goes off filming. There he is. Hello? Yes, what? So we've walked all the way through Foy. We have. Haven't we? We have. And we're nearly at the cup park for Cafe Mill. Opposite the cup park, Game of Thrones fans will be in the to find there's an ice cream shop called Game of Cones. I like so if you want to find it, you have to walk all the way through Foy to the Cafe Mill car park. And it's very busy. So it used to be the Game of Thrones houses, and now it's Polish ones. I wonder if that was a copyright thing. What are you going to have? Um. Gosh, there's all sorts in there. Yeah. I'm going to have heavenly honeycomb, please. I've changed my mind, sir. I'm going to have a salted caramel. Oh, yeah. Okay. What are you having? Rhubarb and custard. Oh, nice. In a food? Oh, yes. 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 Looking good. Cheers. Is that like. Oh, my God, it's all over you. That's amazing. <laughs> Mine's oh. dripping. Hurry up. <laughs> God, so I want good. to taste mine. Very good. Wow, that is really nice. So I've gone with salted caramel, and you've gone with rhubarb and custard. Yes. Mmm. Mm. Cause I work for these videos, isn't it? Excellent. Yes. This is so oh god, it's so good. Sarah, can can I just say that ice cream was amazing? It's so really it's nice, isn't it? Ice creams I've had. That's good value for money portion. as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No complaints. Well just done. Game of cones. Fantastic. Yeah. Really good. So just recapping on our map. We're now here at Cafe Mill End. We'll just zip back to Tanki and we'll pick up the Esplanade. We'll go down and show you the, the ferry point to go to Pol Ruin and then we'll go on to Ready Money Cove. Brilliant. Ready Money Cove is the best beach in Foy, so if you've got kids or little ones, that's where you want to be aiming. Sarah, mm -hmm. I don't think I filmed that very well us having that ice cream. <laughs> I think we should redo it. Well, I'll tell you what, should we redo it at Ready Money Cove? <laughs> <laughs> I like this video. This is great. We, should, we, need, to, we need to make more Come of these. Come to Foy and try ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so just to get through quickly, we're following Bull Hill which will come out opposite the bookshop and it's just a quicker way for us to get back to Tang Key and you get some fantastic views of Foy and the river and the rooftops look at that all the seagulls oh there's babies oh by that chimney pot I don't know if they're coming out 
Probably my camera's not good enough, but they're so cute. Oh, even seagulls when their babies look cute. I think everything looks <laughs> cute in Foy. Yeah. You know about seagulls then, don't you? No. So if you've enjoyed our video today, then please give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Just help with the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> if you've really enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing. Cornish Walking Trails. If you do get a chance to wander around the back streets of Foy, it's really rewarding. It actually brings us back to our Ward Lock book that we talked about earlier, our guidebook from the early 1900s. I'll dig it out on Tanki and it gives the most wonderful description of these houses and the way that they're in such a tight proximity to each other. So this is a, oh, I think it's an early 20th century guidebook to Foy. And it says about the streets, each street intrudes itself, apologetically of course, so close to every other street, that the ground plan is a Chinese puzzle. Each house nods at the other house and says, well, we are packed, just standing room and no more. It's true, isn't it? They're all standing straight to attention. You can't get any more in there. <laughs> and that's not changed, is it? No, not at all. Yay, we found a date. So it says 1930-31 and it is the Wardlock Red Book for Foy and South Cornwall. You can imagine the day used to be but that every traveller in the 1930s would be clutching one of these yes. to read and understand about It tells about you everything. Foy. And now, now everything's online obviously isn't well, it? Well it I, is. I suppose in a way what we're doing today is a more updated version of, of this. In a vlog style. Yeah but we, we eat ice cream. <laughs> yes but the other <laughs> thing is this actually that we picked up in the car park is incredibly useful. It's got everything in it. It's got doctor surgeries, it's got car parking, it's got tourist information coming out of its ear holes. And I'll put the website that it's on along the bottom of the stream the screen now. to scoot along the Esplanade now. It's a nice name, isn't it? Isn't it? It's like posh, isn't it? It does, doesn't it? Well, it is, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no two ways you can dress that up nicely. So, I, suppose, I mean, Esplanade, was that put in, must have been Victorian times, is it? I think it is. I think it was all laid out and it follows the riverbank, doesn't it? And it's kind of terraced, beautiful yes. houses right. along there. And we're going to head towards Quilla Cooch's house, aren't we? Yes. Um, where you catch the ferry across to Paul Ruin. Yes, Quilla Cooch was an author back in the 19th century. Yeah, they actually had uh, when we went in the museum, had a little uh, bit of information there about him, a little bit of, of a display. Oh, Couldn't get run over. <laughs> yeah, so he wrote a book called Troy Town, based on Foy, which if you can get hold of a copy, is a, it's quite a good read actually. When I walk along the Esplanade, I just find myself staring upwards at these beautiful townhouses, Victorian townhouses, and they're so tall. And then on the other side, you know that they're on such a steep slope that they've got a floor below ground level, and all of their back fronts onto the waterfront. So they've all got views of the river. Part way along the Esplanade, there's this beautiful house. See that wooden balcony, isn't it glorious? That is where Quilla Cooch, Arthur Quilla Cooch, lived. In fact, I think there's a plaque to him, and it says he lived there from 1892 to 1944. And it pretty much looks unchanged. It doesn't look as though it's been updated. Still got the stained glass in the stairway, the balcony's wooden. And all the windows are still wooden. Fantastic doorway. There's number 61, the Esplanade. Right next to it, you'll see this fabulous navigation marker. Looks like a rocket painted bright red. And this is the way to the quay 
of the ferry to Polruin and in the summer they run to Mevagizzi from here as well but you must be aware that it's only at certain times of the year that they use this key otherwise you're using Tang Key. It's high tide, there's no beach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very tiny beach here at low tide, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> Our final destination is going to be Ready Money Cove. So you follow the beach sign past Quillacoochee's house and along the Esplanade. We're running out of time on the video, come on! But it's uphill! <laughs> the tortoise and the hare springs to mind. You can make up your own mind who's who, but we know who wins. <laughs> the introduction to Foy in this book is, is perfect. It's still apt a hundred years later. It says, pretty little Foy disarms criticism for it is unique. No sooner does the visitor arrive than he perceives the happy, buoyant, irresponsible tone pervading the delightful little town. Aww. And it's still like that today, isn't it? It's happy, people are going about enjoying themselves, it's chilled, it's relaxed, and it is beautiful. It is, absolutely. It's not really changed, is it? Look at him. He's happy. <laughs> oh, that's the Mevagizzi ferry. Last sailing of the day. Is it? Yeah. So that's gone from White Slip. Uh, White, White House, House slip. slip, that's right. Yeah. Here's one for you, Sarah. What's best for you, Mevagissi? Oh, God. I'm sure you lot will have an, an opinion about that. Put it in the comments. <laughs> that's a smart move, Sarah. That means that we won't get banned from Foy or Mevagissi. Yeah, but everybody else. <laughs> everybody else has left a comment will be. <laughs> <laughs> so, bearing in mind what that guidebook has just said mm. about Foy. I think you can have a really good day in Foy. You can spend the whole day here. Yeah, it's that perfect place to mooch. Yes, and it's nice and long, so you can amble it at leisure, can't yep. you? You've got some really nice shops to sort of browse through, haven't you? Yeah. And everybody seems quite happy, and you've got, you know, basically just look out to the water and see all the boats going up and down. It just makes you feel happy. There's something for everybody as well, isn't there? There's a beach down here for the kids. We're now getting to Ready Money Cove. And we're obviously into our walking as well, and this is a great place to base yourself for walks. So you've got the Foy Hall Walk, which we've done before, which is absolutely beautiful. It takes you around on two ferries. Yeah. Because that's a pole ruin, doesn't it? But you can walk where we're walking now and keep yes. going past <laughs> Ready Money Cove, and that goes out to the uh, day marker at Ribbon Head, doesn't it? And picks in, picks up um, the coast path, you go through Pridmouth yes. Cove, yeah. don't you? And in the other direction, you could actually pick up the Saints Way, couldn't you? And that goes out yeah. towards Gallant. Yeah, so it's, it's really flexible, and it ticks nearly every box for me. You've got a bit more time as well, it's well worth getting a ferry across to Pole Ruin and doing the Atlantic Bay Walk. Yeah. So we did that, uh, was it last year or the year before? I can't remember, but I think we're, we're going to need a playlist of Foy Walks. We are, we are. At the end of this video. But the Atlantic Bay Walk is absolutely oh, beautiful, isn't stunning. it? stunning. That reminds me, we must try and get on that beach. Yes. We didn't get Good down idea. there. Another video for the future, gosh. You, you know where we are now, Sarah, don't you? Yes. So we're walking down towards Ready Money Cove. It's a perfect viewing spot. Just above the beach shop, there's a grassy area with some benches on. You'll recognise it because there's some towers with turrets there, and it's the most beautiful place just to sit and watch the world go by. For the more energetic, you could actually swim out into the bay, out to the pontoon. For the less energetic, you could just enjoy a paddle. Final bit out to St Catherine's Castle, <laughs> and it will make you puff. There are several steps, and it is steep. Woo. Welcome to St Catherine's Point. There have been many centuries of human activity here. Much of the evidence today looks beneath undergrowth, but you can still explore the Tudor blockhouse and Second World War gun battery on the point. On guard. 
brilliant, isn't it? Halt! Who goes there? It feels so old, doesn't it? Oh, you're not playing, are oh, you? Okay. <laughs> so as the sun sets on Foy, also sets on our video. Have you enjoyed your day? I've had a beautiful day. Uh, Foy is certainly a joy. It's, it is, isn't it? It's beautiful. Um, we just wanted to make a little guide just to try and help you out if you wanted to come yourself. We don't want to spoil it for you. You need to come, you need to experience it. Yeah, go and sample way. some of the food in those restaurants we've featured. We can't do it all for you. You've got to come and do that yourself. Yeah, we kind of know what it's like if you go somewhere and you haven't been before, or you maybe went a long time ago. Just a little guide to help you figure out where you might want to park, things yeah. you might want to see, things you might want to do, places to eat, that sort of thing. So, CWT TripAdvisor School, what would you give it? It's a five out of five for me. Five out of five. If you're in Cornwall, four is a must do. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah, perfect sum up. <laughs> got, it, got it right for once. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> so until next time, we'll sign off now. Bye. Bye.